So after our Goodbye Volcano High review, a few people wanted us to do Snoot Game, a well-known fan-made parody. That was two months ago. Rest assured, we here at Genovision never break a promise. We just procrastinate really hard on them. Or my name ain't Mac Chista. Like our Goodbye Volcano High review, this video aims to be as spoiler-free as possible so as to allow a relatively blind playthrough, so it might come off as a little dry or vague. But if you've played the game, hopefully you'll be able to connect the dots. Snoot Game takes place in an alternate Earth where humans and anthropomorphic dinosaurs coexist. You play as a guy named... Anin Kuhn, a senior transfer student at Volcano High School, the only human student of his kind. Perhaps hoping to simply coast on to the end of the semester, he is instead gradually forced out of his shell as he is introduced to a wide variety of colorful characters, lovingly recreated from the Goodbye Volcano High game. You have Naser, overachiever burdened with heavy expectations of greatness, Naomi, an unusually and suspiciously upbeat dino, Trish, an overprotective, overpossessive friend, and of course, Fang, a troubled, angsty, non-binary teens struggling to find their place in the world. And of course, the one you spend most of the game's runtime with. The storyline mostly revolves around Annan and Fang's relationship with each other, building off from complicated beginnings to a little more than a blossoming friendship. Gameplay-wise, as you can already tell, it's a visual novel, and a pretty typical one at that. Mostly reading, accompanied by character stills, no real gameplay, and choices being made to influence the story every so often. Not too much to say about it, although I did appreciate the limited animation and movement of the character stills, which adds just a little bit more life to the game. So as far as the story goes, it's pretty solid. Despite being a parody game, it actually treats the setting and characters with respect and seeks to offer a genuine experience to the player. In fact, if you know anything about Goodbye Volcano High, just throw it away. Because by all means, Snoot Game is an entirely original experience. Aside from the characters, obviously, the content within it bears no resemblance. The writing and dialogue rolls off quite smoothly, and the pacing feels just right. It moves at just the right tempo so that it doesn't feel like a rapid-fire plot points, but also doesn't feel sluggish, with each scene feeling feeling as though it has something to contribute to the story. It does a good job of maintaining interest all the way through. We certainly enjoyed the diverse cast of characters and personalities, each of course with their own personal issues, intrigue, and baggage that are unpacked as the game progresses. Interacting and bonding with these characters and seeing them struggle and grow is certainly an emotionally moving experience. And the conflicts that arise with them feel natural, heavy, and meaningful. You can really feel the tension and weight behind them. Snoot Game has a story that's very easy to get invested in. It does a good job of making you care and feel for these characters and their journeys. We also appreciated just how alive the world of Snoot Game felt. While there are many important personalities that the player interacts with for the bulk of the game, there's also a diverse range of side characters to round out the cast. And I really liked seeing these side characters. They tend to be just a little more out there, and that makes scenes involving them very fun. Of course, being minor characters, they're used relatively sparingly, so their more bubbly personalities don't devalue the otherwise down-to-earth nature of the story. The game also explores many locations within the setting as well, which makes the city it takes place in feel more real. It's seriously hard for us to put in words how good the writing, story, and characters are. The game does a great job of making the story feel real and believable. It's really easy to attach yourself and relate to these characters. And more to it, the game can make you feel. It can be wholesome, depressing, bittersweet, dreadful, arousing. The art and music is charming. I don't have much to say about it, we're not really critics in those fields, but they set the mood very well and it goes a long way in enhancing the experience. The backgrounds are obviously just photos drawn over, but it's acceptable. There are choices that are made in the game, some matter, some don't. The choices that do matter usually has very little immediate consequence, but will determine the ending stages of the game. The game hinges on this hidden scorekeeping mechanic, meaning that whatever choices you make will influence which ending you'll get, of which there are four. The endings are probably our favorite part where everything in the game leads to this one big payoff. Again, I'm trying not to spoil anything, but trust me when I say, man. And I like that choices technically matter, but that being said, in the context of the game, it really doesn't feel like your decisions are influencing anything. Again, a lot of the decisions you make in the game are seemingly minuscule, and I think the point of that is the game's trying to nail in that seemingly small decisions can build up to affect things in major ways. And I do get the reasoning with a lot of these choices, but the endings feel disconnected from the decisions that you made. It's really hard to feel as though I made these choices and this happened as a result of it. Again, I think I 
get what the game's going for, I'm just not quite sure it accomplished it. In our opinion, the humor is a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, the game is actually pretty funny at points, even if it is mostly due to shock value. On the other hand of the spectrum, being a game from the site, a lot of the jokes make references to 4chan and internet culture. Hell, the game opens with the main character trying to decide how he's gonna shit post on an online image board. And there's a few similar jokes like that. There's a point in the game where a female grabs Anon's hand and, I mean, I'll just let it play out. That's not to mention several characters very clearly inspired from other media. I don't know if this is a nuclear take, but I'd call it a derivative of quirky indie game humor, except instead of constant references to dated memes, it's 4chan. Some people might say it's not that big of a deal, and I suppose they'd be right. In our experience, at least, it's not cringeworthy or annoying. It doesn't really ruin the experience or immersion. It's pretty easy to look past. Hell, some people might get a kick out of that sort of stuff. But to some extent, it's kind of just... Really? The main story is about four or five hours, roughly, which is pretty substantial. But when that's all said and done, you still have the bonus content to get through. With each of the four unique endings in the main game you unlock, you get access to some extra episodes which take place during and after the game's main story, with events previously unseen being brought into the fold. Some of these episodes are even told from the perspectives of other characters, and you get to see things happen from their point of view. And by all means, the game really didn't have to do this, but it's really cool that they went that extra mile to get this content out and further flesh out these characters. It adds so much and recontextualizes a lot of these characters in a good way. At the end of it all, when you've seen everything, you've met the characters, you've played through their stories, you've squeezed every last bit of what the game has to offer, and everything's done and seen, there's something to take away from Snoop Game. A moral, a lesson to be learned. Now what that lesson and moral is, I'll leave for you to interpret. After all, that's kind of the appeal of these sorts of games. Or at least I assume so. But I think when a game, or really any sort of media, manages to make you feel like you're leaving with more than what you came in with, that's special. And Snoot Game does it. It really does it. I give Snoot Game an 8 out of 10. It's a pretty typical visual novel, but phenomenally written. We're pleasantly surprised with Snoot Game. Admittedly, we underestimated it going in, not really knowing anything about it, so it really blew us out of the water. We didn't know we were walking into one of the most moving games we've honestly probably ever played. So, recommendations. First off, I will say that the game ranges from somewhat politically incorrect to downright disturbing. There are slurs, some of which are wholly original to the game, which... Call it world building, I guess. And of course, one of the endings, and you probably know the one, can be very upsetting, to say the least. There definitely is content with the potential to upset here. And while it can be argued, with merit, that it makes sense in the context of the game, some people just aren't gonna like that, and that's fine. But other than that, I wholeheartedly recommend Snoop Game. A review can't do the game justice. You really gotta go and play it for yourself, and behold it with your own two eyes. And the game's free, so if it looks interesting, by all means, give it a download. In the meantime, that's gonna do it for this review. Long live the snoot.